Hi. Hi. Uh, how's everyone come through the Fulham game? No more injuries? Everyone unscathed? No, we're okay. A couple of bumps and bruises, but yeah, no, we, we should be okay. Obviously, we've still got over 24 hours, so a um, couple of lads will have a, a few bit more work done, but yeah, I hope everyone should be okay. What's that win done for the confidence, the morale? Have you noticed it? Um, yeah, I think we're in a we're, we're in a decent spot at the moment. We've had a decent spell. I think is it is it three wins in seven or or something, and a couple of wins um, recently. So yeah, we've yeah we're we're in a decent spot. The lads the lads are enjoying it. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a big test coming in in just over twenty four hours. Um, Brighton are, are a fantastic team, so. Um, a real test, especially with a quick turnaround, not too much time to prep, only a day really to prep the lads for what is a, a very complicated task against a, a very good side. Is morale high though? Is confidence high in terms of the, the battle you're facing at the moment and belief? Yeah, I think you, yeah, the, the belief that was shown in the, well, from 30 minutes onwards really in the Fulham game and um, yeah, the, the belief has been there always, but of course some positive results and the lads being rewarded for, for some of their good work has, um, yeah, it's helped, of course. So, um, looking forward to, to two more very big games this week. Marcus Tavernier, is he the sort of player who could decide almost whether you're in the Premier League next year or not? Is he, is he that key? That's a lot of pressure to put on Marcus Tavernier. So, uh, no, no, he's it's, it's, it's part of our group um, and he's, he's, he's a big part of it, of course. Um, but he's still a, still a young lad. It's still his first season in the top flight. Um He's adapted very, very well. He's improved all the way through it as well. So at the start, maybe he's, he showed signs of promise without delivering so much. And then he suffered two very significant injuries as well. So, um, yeah, we need to need to be realistic with where he is at the moment. Um, but you saw the impact that he can have. So uh, important that we, we try and keep him fit. We work with him and keep improving him. Um, he's a great lad, has quality, has physical attributes, and has an incredible attitude to to want to work and want to improve. So he has, um, yeah, he has a real chance of of constantly getting better and being able to affect top flight football matches. Yeah. So do you need to be careful now going forward in terms of the balance between obviously managing him, but also the need for him to to play as well? Yeah. So as always, I'll be I'll be advised and um, follow the advice the best I can from the the experts on how much and when and um, yeah we'll, we'll try and make sure that this time that he's back that he that he stays back because obviously last time we had him back for a, for one sub appearance and then he started the, the next game and then we lost him again so um, important that we try if we can as we do with all of them try and manage the load try and pick up on things before they become too serious and um, try and keep the squad in a place where everyone's available Is he likely to start against Brighton? Uh, yeah, I'd never confirm any any of the starters before, um, so I'll wait till the, the team sheet's announced. But yeah, he's available. Can I just get your reaction to Graham Potter and Brendan Rodgers being dismissed over the weekend? Two pr promising young English coaches. Um, how worrying is that in terms of as a fellow Premier League manager? It, certainly in Graham Potter's instance, the fact that he's not been given the chance, the time to develop Chelsea. Yeah, no. So firstly, my thoughts, obviously. Uh, on Graham and, and Brendan is two incredible managers. Uh, the work that, that Graham done at Brighton and, and clubs before that it was, yeah, he did some incredible work there. So um, disappointed for him that um, at a very big club like Chelsea, he, he didn't get as long as he would have liked, I'm sure. Um, but also 100% sure that he'll bounce back whenever he's ready um, and show everyone what a good manager and football coach he is again. Brendan's time at Leicester, obviously some real highs in there. Um, was, has been there quite a long time and um, won the FA Cup, knocking on the Champions League door um, a few times. So, um, yeah, has had, a, has had a successful spell at Leicester. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure the same with, with Brendan. I'm sure we'll see him back and um, whenever he's ready. I think uh, looking at it further no I don't, I don't really look at it I, I understand the nature of the job just because other people are losing theirs doesn't make me feel any differently around what it is uh, I accept that if things don't go well uh, you lose your job that's the, the nature of being a football manager so um, yeah I, I've always understood that and accept that and then concentrate on, on doing the job the best I can and In terms of Leicester could it mean a, a bounce back a reaction do you think down, down at the bottom? From them, it can do, yeah, it can do. You, you never know. I think it 
it, it's a possibility. Um, we, we'll have to see. I don't, I don't focus too much on the others. We, we obviously go there next weekend, but um, we have a huge task in front of us before that. So, um, yeah, from my point of view, full focus on Brighton, that are an excellent side. Um, I haven't lost too many football matches recently um, and getting the boys ready. In terms of Brighton, uh, what have you been particularly impressed about them this season and, and how do you try and negate their threats? Yeah, they, they dominate the ball. I think they're, they're the second most ball in the league, very, very close to Manchester City, sort of possession stats-wise. So, yeah, incredible with what they do with the ball. They're very well coached. They've had a similar style for a long time. Players understand it very well. Obviously, um, new manager has, has added his own bits to it. But, um, yeah, they've been headed in the same sort of direction for a very long time. And you can see that there's a real clear understanding. Um, yeah, they're difficult to stop, as you've seen, having, uh, having an incredible season, very high up the league. So, um, yeah, we, we did OK at their place. Possibly should have got something from the game. Um, and I expect tomorrow to be to be another tough test. Hi, Gary. Hi. You touched on it there, the performance in the reverse game two months ago. Would you accept that same performance? You were pretty pleased with it after the game. I think there's bits we can improve. Um, I think, obviously, Brighton dominate the ball in every game they play. Um, even against Arsenal and Manchester City, they had more of the ball, so that, that that's what they do. Um, sometimes that can feel more edgy at home than it does away because um, obviously the stadium is filled with your own fans so um, but that is what Brighton do I expect them to have more of the ball than us um, difference this time I think we had a couple of weeks to prep for the last one I think it was after an international break whereas this one comes we've only really had today with the boys on the grass which needed to be light so um, yeah it'll, it'll, it'll be a tough test for sure um, but we're in a good spot we have we have some tools that we can definitely try and hurt them with um, and yeah, looking forward to to watching the boys go up against them and, and see if we can pose them some problems. I think you felt there was a foul in the build up to the winning goal as well that Matoma scored. Remember, I mean, I've complained about a lot of goals in my time, so um, yeah, I can't remember it specifically. In terms of the weekend, two weekly half time subs made a big impact, obviously contributing towards the two goals. How much of a strength is that for you as a coach to have the extra subs that you can bring on, you can make? quite big changes at half time and still go again later on and, and keep all the players on their toes when they're sat on the bench yeah it's important especially we, we can make five subs now of course so the strength of the the bench and the squad is very very important um <clears throat> yeah it was nice because we we didn't change anything tactically i know there was probably a consensus that we'd change something from first half to second but we hadn't um just helped the boys execute it slightly better changed a couple of personnel um yeah, and there was obviously a big difference in the level of performance from the two. So, yeah, it was a big plus. Ryan Christie and Tav had an impact on that and, and also managing to tidy up a few of the mistakes that the lads were making. Um, but, yeah, the strength of the squad is good, um, much better than it has been recently when we suffered some real, some yeah, some tough spells of injuries. Um, so, yeah, being able to affect things from the bench is, is helpful. And for Dom and his performance, cap with a goal, is that the benchmark? He had so many touches. He was so influential in, in the way that you play. Yeah, I think the, yeah, the way the game went, the nature of the game plan suited him. I think he he carried out what we'd asked of him extremely well. Um, if we were going to be critical, I think he could have had another goal or two in there somewhere. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fantastic number nine's performance, and delighted that he gets his goal in the end because he deserved it. Um, and there's been a few of them in there from Dom. He's played very well a lot of times this season, and. Sometimes, uh, as you can see, with how much this one's being noticed, a, a goal makes a big difference because there's there's been a lot of real good performances where he hasn't got a goal or maybe he doesn't get the the recognition he deserves. But to add the goal um, sort of highlights to everyone what a what a good job he did. Still ten games to go. It's a big chunk of the season, but is there an urgency from you to try and get the job done? early on especially with a couple of home games against sides around yeah I'd love to get the job done but if if you guaranteed me that I'd get it done by the 28th of May that'd be fine as well so as long as I get it done I'm, I'm fine with with when it gets done can you still see it going to the final day uh, I don't know I don't look that far ahead I mean hopefully we can win on Tuesday that will help win on Saturday and we're starting to get closer so um, yeah that, that's how I'm looking at it at the moment and yeah, take each one. And then I think probably as you come closer to the end, if it's still as close as it is, you start to pay more attention to 
other results and how many goals are going in. But at this moment in time, it's yeah, still win the next game. And just finally for me, you, you say Brighton's obviously likely to dominate possession as they do in pretty much every game they play. So how important can the crowd be in staying patient with the players and you when maybe you do have extended play uh, that you don't have the ball? Yeah, I think the the crowd here, they're, they're always f fairly understanding of the, the task and, and what the game's going to look like. They, I understand they, they want us to be front foot. We, we want to be front foot. Um, we always try to be. We always try and pick the right times to be. Um, and we, we will try to be against Brighton. So, yeah, I mean, there's no guarantees of what the game's going to look like. But, yeah, if you look at Brighton's last 26 or 27, however many they've played, they've, they've all looked fairly similar. So, um, yeah, we have ways that we feel like we can we can affect that. Um, and when we do get the ball, we need to be good of it.